Welcome to the brand new episode of the Tech Catch Up Show on Nerd for Tech Originals. In today's episode, I have with me Billy Ellis, a software developer and a researcher at Zycosec and a YouTuber. In this episode, he discusses about some really hardcore software development stuff and also about his YouTube channel. Watch this episode till the end. This is your host Kushal Shrivastav and see you on the other side. Welcome, Billy, to the podcast, the Tech Ketchup Show, a Nerd for Tech Originals, and I just hope you enjoy today's episode and we have a great conversation. Uh, so, like, uh, Billy, starting from uh, like to begin with the conversation, how like you have you have been doing such a commendable job at just just a very early age when you are just twenty twenty one and you are doing such a great job in whatever field you are interested in. So. Uh, like what what what's the motivation out there that actually makes you work for your interest and that has actually helped you in giving that consistent performance and getting getting to work out like whatever you feel like so what what's that mot- motivation behind all those stuff uh so i think my motivation first started when i was interested in the ios jailbreaking scene like when i was around 13 14 uh, 14 so young teenager basically and I was really interested in how jailbreaks worked and I started jailbreaking like my iPod at the time and um, basically from there I just started kind of digging into how it all works behind the scenes and learning as much as I possibly can about programming and then eventually moved on to the security stuff and looked at how like jailbreaks worked and stuff like that Um, and yeah it's just been like a that's been my driving motivation really for all of what I'm now doing Um, yeah okay so uh, what, was it some kind of a fascination at that point of time or was it something that curiosity to find out certain things uh, that that more, that like intrigued you to do to go and carry on your research work behind it or was it was it some kind like was your upbringing some sort of that that you were motivated from your family members or someone to do uh, get uh, explore more uh, yeah, no, I had no, my family members are not, um, there's no like tech people really in my family. So I was really the first one to kind of get into this kind of thing. And uh, yeah, it was just curiosity about how, how things, how apps were built and then how, how jailbreaks, will, how jailbreaks were built and then how like the systems worked. Um, and that just kind of led me to, to really try and find out as much as I possibly can by um, researching online, looking at YouTube videos and learning programming myself. Um, but yeah, no, I don't really have any family members who, who were, uh, doing software or anything like that so it was all just um being resourceful and looking looking online for what um what i needed to learn oh great so like i was going through your some of your talks that you have given at various uh was uh, at various uh conferences so i i found out that you are very much into the arms and security software security things so could you explain like what actually you are like your background is and what what are the things that you actually work on to the to the listeners in a in a more simpler and more interactive manner and then you could discuss some of your projects or uh, your responsibilities that you have been w- working along throughout your professional career yeah sure so um yeah the arm the arm exploitation the talks that i've given at conferences is basically all about the the low level security so how um, basically programs and code works at the, the deepest level, so on the CPU level. So um, ARM is the architecture used in mobile devices, and my talks and a lot of my work has basically been focused on reverse engineering these devices and their operating systems um, and mobile apps. Um, and it all relates to to the ARM architecture and ARM assembly, which is it's just the you know the very low level. So it's it's very like deep in the security of how the system works rather than a more high level um, like web security is very different to web security. It's very, very deep into like very low level, like the CPU and how it executes okay. and how programs work on a low level. Um, and that's, yeah, so that's why I've, I've spoken at conferences about that. And that's all related to the work I've done professionally as well. So I worked, I worked at a company doing um, reverse engineering on mobile apps to figure out how the APIs work in their apps. Um, that's just one example of the use case. Um, and then also like, um, OS level security as well. So like um, exploitation of like an operating system kernel 
um, and that's, that relates to jailbreaking as well. So it's all about the very low level um, inner, work, inner workings of like applications and operating systems. Okay. Uh, could you could you just also tell us uh, like you you spoke a word reverse engineering. So what actually is reverse engineering? Because a lot of lot of fancy meanings are out there about reverse engineering, and a lot of lame meanings are also out there. So what actually uh, reverse engineering means when we are talking about it in such kind of a domain? Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, right, reverse engineering basically is just the process of trying to figure out exactly what's happening behind the scenes of you know an application or an operating system so there's many use cases for it um, but it's basically about the whole idea that this code is executing on your device and if the cpu can basically read the code then you as a person can as well if you do enough digging into it so yeah the reverse engineering there's various different techniques used and various different use cases but it's all about figuring out what is happening underneath and behind the scenes how things are working how algorithms have been implemented um, just what the application is doing, um, maybe in, in the context of like an API, how the application is communicating with, a, with an API. Um, it's all about just digging behind the scenes, kind of like peeling back the layers and trying to figure out what's really happening underneath it all. Okay, great. Uh, also, uh, like, uh, how did YouTube happen to you? And like, what, what was the idea behind starting your own channel and creating a content that is not as usual for as compared to other tech channels, uh, and you you teach something about uh, reverse engineering only and all those sort of things. So, what was that idea behind starting a YouTube channel and getting such kind of content that is not so usual? Uh, yeah, so my I actually started my YouTube channel um, in 2013 when okay. I was um, I wasn't actually doing any kind of reverse engineering back then. I actually started yeah. by doing videos on like mobile gaming, basically. So I okay. play games gameplay on, on my yeah. iPad or my iPod. Um, and then, yeah, that quickly, that kind of led into my curiosity about, about the hacking side of things and the reverse engineering. I started wanting to figure out how to hack these games. Um, and that led me to learn about the programming and learn about the behind the scenes kind of stuff. And yeah, so I guess my YouTube kind of evolved from there. And I started doing tutorials on programming and tutorials on, on reverse engineering and how to like hack and patch these different games. And then it's kind of just moved up and I've done a few like, um, more advanced kind of videos in the recent years about like reverse engineering, arm exploitation. Um, and it, it kind of all just grew from there. But yeah, my channel initially wasn't actually anything to do with reverse engineering. It was just about mobile gaming. And it just, it just kind of evolved as my curiosity um, grew over the years, I guess. Okay, well. So also one thing like uh, you have been giving a lot of talks uh, and at the conferences, uh, meeting a lot of people, interacting with different kind of minds. So, uh, or like throughout the globe. So what do you feel like, uh, what, what, what is the kind of mindset that people uh, now have uh, in respect to technologies? And what is their approach? Like, uh, are they very much acceptable to the changes that technology is bringing? Or is this some kind of, some kind of force that drives them back? And uh, they're, not, they're not very much comfortable in accepting those uh, impacts and things that are being brought up by the technology. So what do you think is the kind of mindset of the people you interact with in general around the globe? Uh, yeah, so most of the people I meet at conferences um, are security people based on, you know, the, the nature okay. of the conferences I go to. They're based mostly around security kind of things. So I meet a lot of different security researchers. Um, and yeah, most of them, I mean, it's, it's, it depends kind of which side of the spectrum. A lot of people work on the offensive side of security. So trying to break, um, you know, iOS or Android or different, different security mitigations in these, in these recent operating systems. So I think the general mindset of everyone is like trying to work towards a more secure world in general. Um, we're trying to build it, you know, I mean, it kind of, they kind of tie both in with each other, the um, offensive and defensive, because, you know, you try and break a mitigation and then now you need to develop a new mitigation to, to prevent those attacks. So most of the mindset of the people I meet are just about focused on security and improving the security of these mobile devices uh, in, in the hope that we get a more secure um, like tech world, I guess. Um, I don't really mix with too many people who are like uh, into the other spaces of, of tech really, because as I said, I mostly go to like security specific conferences. Um, yeah, that's probably all I can say about that. Okay. Also, uh, like you mentioned, uh, and because your background holds, uh, you are you are into that so, uh, surface security and arm um, kind of things. So, mm -hmm. what like 
can can you just tell us some something like very interesting and lesser known uh, securities security issues that our devices uh, have uh, in today in today's world our devices usually have like some of, some of them if you can tell some of the most uh, usual but still lesser known uh, security issues that devices in today's world have um yeah so it's kind of a hard question to answer because there's, there's a huge variety of different um different types but the, so the stuff i deal with is really um very deep in the kernel level um okay. I, I play around with like kernel um, level exploits um and so yeah a, a general user wouldn't really know necessarily what that means or even know the existence of a kernel really in their devices but basically it's like the core of the operating system and the the vulnerabilities come in, into play when there is certain code running in your operating system that's not been properly, um, it's not been safely written basically. So like it could be like missing validation checks or a mishandling of something. So like basically error handling that's not handled properly is, is where a lot of these vulnerabilities occur, um, at least on the operating system level. And so an attacker can, you know, discover, discover some section of code in the operating system that, that contains um, like a faulty check for something or a mishandling of something. And they can use that to their advantage to craft some kind, some kind of payload that's going to take advantage of that, and then you know eventually lead to like a full um, system compromise. Um, so those are the kind of bugs I deal with. It, it, you know, it's, it's it's called the the class of like memory corruption bugs. That's the the class of security vulnerability. Um, which, as I, as I said at the beginning, it's going to be very different to someone who does like web security, for example. It's a very different side of the spectrum to that. Um, but it's it's very very it's very interesting stuff, and there's there's always there's so many new um, new bugs and exploits being released every every year um, for iOS and Android um, and other and other operating systems. Great. Yeah. Uh, so, like, uh, believe we are living in, in, in a time where everything is changing at a very at all time high rate, and this and a lot a lot can be credited to the technologies and innovations that that is taking place around us. So now as an individual and as a person who is a contributor to such kind of revolution what do you think like mm -hmm. what do you think about the positive side of such such uh, changes that are being brought by the technology and the negative side of the negative impacts of such technologies what are you your views on this um yeah that's a that's a difficult one i mean obviously everyone knows about the social media and how it's affecting people that's quite a, that's quite a big a big thing at the moment and, and the new documentary uh, the social dilemma have you seen that yeah yeah that was a i watched that the other day that was yeah i mean that's that's obviously a big issue the social the social impact yeah. um as for the actual like technologies also we have obviously like huge amounts of um value to gain from new technologies like for example um elon musk's um brain chip the Neuralink. that was that looks really 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 cool um and you know obviously that's gonna be great for health benefits for people um yeah as for like other technologies like buzzword kind of ones like ai and blockchain yeah. i'm not really sure to be honest about the um specifics of those and how they're gonna really affect the world i don't really deal with those directly but i have met some people who who are interested in those fields um and what i find is normally is very they're very polarized um uh, very polarizing kind of topics because there's a lot of people who really hate them probably because they're buzzwords and they get a bit overused. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's probably people doing really cool things and I'm sure we'll see some great things with, with, with blockchain or AI in the future. Yeah. I don't personally deal with those really though. Uh, Bill, that was greatly good. Also one thing uh, that uh, like, since, since we are living in such kind of an era, how do you try to improve and upgrade yourself and your skills so that you can continuously contribute to such a revolution in a very positive manner and uh, and to just just develop and grow yourself each day how do you keep that pace within yourself uh so yeah for me it's it's very focused on the security of of the digital world because that's going to that, that basically goes across everything. It's kind of exactly. it, everything, everything revolves around the security of it. So um, yeah, that's definitely my focus of, of trying to learn as much as I can with the security research things, progressing my own research and knowledge, and also um, educating people about, um, you know, hacking, basically hacking and security and vulnerabilities and stuff. So that's partly why I do YouTube videos to educate people on how these bugs occur and how you can exploit them. Um, and ultimately how you can basically write secure code and sec secure operating systems. Um, 
And yeah, for that, that's definitely my main focus, the security side of things. Um, yeah, I think it's important to educate people about that and like have people write in safer code um, because, you know, it's very surprising that you see so many bugs still in operating systems that um, often have code bases from like decades ago based on, you know, for example, the iOS kernel is based on a mixture of different components that some of them, some of the code was written uh, decades ago. So, you know, there's bound to be bugs. Yes. Um, also, has your YouTube channel helped you like, has you? Has it helped you personally to gain something from it apart from like whatever monetary and those those th those benefits? Apart from that, has it helped you in growing yourself and upgrading yourself uh, like at any level, be it your uh, professional level, educational level, personal level? Has it helped you in some sort of way? Which I believe yeah, it definitely. has definitely helped you. Yeah, in, in loads of ways, actually. I've, I mean, I've met, I've met a lot of great people through, through doing YouTube. Um, people who watch my videos have like messaged me and then I've got in contact with them and ended up meeting people. Um, I've obviously learned a lot through um, having to teach concepts because I find that teaching, teaching a concept requires you to kind of relearn it yourself and learn it in a much um, more sort of solidified way. So you really know what you're talking about before you can educate someone else. So that's been, it's been a good way to like really consolidate knowledge um and it has also helped yeah with, with professionally i mean um my first job was um I, I basically got i got my first professional job working as a reverse engineer through having a youtube channel basically and an online presence so obviously it opens up opportunities for employers and people in the tech industry to to see you i think it's really good to have um like a public presence even if it's only a small public presence i mean i don't have a huge huge amount of following um i know a lot of other people who have a lot more than i do but any anything if, if you have a youtube channel if you have a blog a podcast like this you know anything is going to really help for people in the industry to really just find you yeah, yeah it's been definitely very very valuable great uh, also uh, do you feel like any any technology any specific technologies that's that's going to be really very much disruptive and it's going to change how the systems actually work currently not in like three to five years, but definitely after 10 to 15 years, that technology is going to just make a boom and change how the organizations and systems work currently. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, there's, there's probably one that I've dealt with more, uh, specifically is um, the API reverse engineering. So uh, as I mentioned before, um, I worked at a job, I worked at a company reverse engineering banking apps, basically to, yeah. to re rebuild their APIs and, sell it to consumers so anyone can build an app that talks to the bank and you know can move money around um you know deal with deal with any bank data basically so i think that will be used across different many different kind of industries so not only banking but anything that has an api um i think people have basically realized i've seen a few different companies doing doing this but they realized that if an app uses an api then you know if you dig into it enough the public can basically use the api as well because the, the phone knows how to communicate with it. So, you know, why can't you just extract all of that and recreate, recreate it to communicate in the same way. So that'll be, um, yeah, that'll definitely, I think that'd be an important one. There's a, there's a company called um, Argyle.io. Um, they actually, they use the same idea, not for banking APIs, but for like um, kind of work-based data. So if you want to find someone's, um, verify someone's salary or verify their home address, um, and it's all done by reverse engineering APIs in consumer applications. Um, so like Uber, for example, you can, you can connect through the Uber API, API that they reverse engineered and pull certain information. Um, I think that would definitely be a big one. Um, and pro also, as I said before, Elon Musk's Neuralink, I think that's really cool. That would definitely be something interesting to see how that progresses. Yeah. Great. Uh, also, are you like, are you an avid reader or listener to the podcast or anything that, that you usually listen to upgrade your, uh, self or to maintain your personal, uh, and professional life in a very balanced manner? Is there anything that you listen to or read to? And if you could, could suggest something to our listeners. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I read quite a lot of self-development books. Um, so like anything from like personal finance um to you know just like kind of mindset and psychology books they're really useful to me um and I, I listen to i do listen to different podcasts actually all sorts of podcasts um sometimes i just i have podcasts just playing in the background while yeah. i work um so 
yeah, I think it's good to consume consume knowledge. I, I mean, it, it helps with concentration as well for me, at least. Um, I listen to like podcasts or audiobooks while I'm actually writing code and it, it helps keep me focused. Um, and yeah, obviously you learn you learn a whole lot from from doing that. Yeah. So great, Billy. It was great having you on the show and I hope you enjoyed this conversation with us. And yeah, thanks for having me. It was amazing talking to you. Thanks. And to all our listeners who are listening to this podcast on any platform, just do like, subscribe and share for more such amazing conversations with nerd for tech and this is your host, Kushak Shwasab, signing off from the, from the Tech Ketchup Show on Not For Tech Originals. Thank you.